Hi there, this is Lady Dreamers, and today we are making baked mac and cheese. Now, you can do your craft mac and cheese, which is very good, and hey, who doesn't like that, especially my grandniece's Paw Patrol. And uh, Chase is on the case. And there's always Stouffer's mac and cheese. But sometimes you want to make it a little bit different. So therefore, I am doing Velveeta, mild cheddar, sharp cheddar, more cheese, and more cheese. Now, they say, don't always use this because it has a waxy flavor. Well, hey, if you uh, are used to this kind of cheese, you don't taste the waxy flavor. Really, honestly. So, I am going to chop this up, and this one I can just sprinkle in, and uh, we can see how we do it in just a moment. Now, the Velviva, Velveeta comes in a block. And just, just cut that open. And you cut this into cubes. And then you put it aside for the next part. So I'm just going to real quick. And... They always say that, um, on, I love watching the Food Network, and they always say you, your cuts have to be precise because some will uh, melt faster than others. Um, and there is truth to that. But on the other side of the coin, if you're making it for yourself, does it really matter? So here is the Vita cut, and then what we're going to do with this cheese, we are just going to sprinkle it in the cup with this, and I got this cheese too. Um, what I was doing was I was at the store, and I thought, you know, what to make, and I thought, hey, Make homemade mac and cheese. So, I will tell you that you will be seeing this in January. I am doing this at the end of September. Why? Because I bought all the stuff and then I realized that I wasn't making it for October, November, or December. <laughs> but I was afraid the cheese would go bad. So, I thought, let's make it, and I'm making it for tonight. I am pairing this with hamburgers, and you can pair it with anything else. Now, the one thing about the cheddar, it is a little bit harder than the Velveeta, which, and you know, feel-wise, it feels just like the... Uh, shredded ones and some I read in some uh, that you can shred it on your your little shredder that you have and I'll show you one of mine real quick and here's my little shredder thing now um, you could shred it on this and then put it over a bowl that is one way to do it and I thought well, since I'm cubing the Velveeta, might as well cube the other cheese. So, the next step on our agenda is to get milk and flour and butter and kind of make a little roux and um, in the saucepan and I am 
using shells because I thought elbow macaroni is just so everyday. Why not get some shells? And they also ask for a little bit of ground mustard and some onion powder. I'm using my infamous minced onion. And um, if you don't have any ground mustard, you can use turmeric. And if you don't have either, that's okay too. Uh, add just a little spice of your choice. So, let me get this all set away and we'll be right back. Now, it says melt two tablespoons of butter in a saucepan, two tablespoons of flour, half a teaspoon of onion powder, and one teaspoon of ground mustard. And I put a little bit of half ground mustard, half uh, turmeric, because I like turmeric. And put the uh, oven on 350 to preheat and put the uh, noodles on to cook and make sure they're al dente. And it says put this on medium heat, but I am going to put it on high and then put it on medium so that the butter melts. And then what you do is you add in the milk and that basically makes your roux. And a roux is uh, what you use on a lot of, lot of sauces. It's basically butter, flour, and milk. So, I'm going to add this in. Whoop. And, sorry about that little tiny noise. And now, I'm going to whisk this. And, right here, how it looks and so you don't have to hear me whisking for about two minutes I'm going to turn off the camera and then let you see the finished product on this part now at this point you put in the Velveeta and you whisk that and it melts in there and I've taken a tray and I buttered it and when we are ready to bake, we're gonna transfer everything to that little tray over here. And we will bake for 20 minutes on 350. And then here is the noodles I have over here. And that sound is saying that 350 is here. The only thing is, we're, uh, not to that point yet. <laughs> so, what I'm going to do is I'm also going to add more cheese. And more cheese. Because you can never have enough cheese in your macaroni and cheese. And then I'm gonna sprinkle the top with bread, clum, cr bread crumbs. And away we go. Now, this is going to be kind of a thick uh, mac and cheese. I like it ooey gooey. <laughs> Okay, so let's add this. Now, the cheese I'm adding extra is the uh, Mexican uh, blend uh, and 
from Kraft and the Shark Cheddar. Now the one thing about extra cheese is that it will give some body to the, uh, the mac and cheese. So we'll be right back when I show you how to put this thing together. Okay, so I have drained the macaroni and we put that in there and then we stir in the macaroni into all this goodness and it smells delicious. As you can see right there. Now, we bring a, a macaroni stuck in the risk and bring this over and let me get some uh, hot plates so I can pick up the, uh, the stuff, turn that off. And, wait a minute, maybe I should bring this a little bit closer so you can see it. And, flip those two. And, pour that all in. And get what they call a uh, fish or a sauna at the same time here. Whoa, look at that cheese. <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> there we go. And then you top it with, they prefer panko, but I don't have panko because we don't use panko a lot. So I have regular breadcrumbs and I put in another little bit of cheese in there. Cheese on cheese on cheese. So just sprinkle it all on the top. And like I said, you cook it in the oven at 350 for 20 minutes. And then it also said that you can mix the breadcrumbs with the butter. I just like to put the butter right on top and kind of like stick it in. And then it melts right in there. And you have more ooey gooey goodness. Now you can do this with a, uh, a fork or a spoon, but hey, Go ahead, it's your family. Put your little loving touch on it. So, there you go. Let me bring it a little bit closer to you so you can see right before. And I'm gonna put it in the oven. bring you over to the oven. Wait a minute. And right there. Now it's time to take it out of the oven. And I've noticed that it's kind of hard for me to show you in the oven so what I'm gonna do is take it out and show you here it's all bubbling and goodness and let me 
spoon out a little bit and then you can see now some people say oh wait until it sets a little bit and I say go and dig in And this is part of what's for dinner. And I am going to show you a picture of the hamburger next to this luscious mac and cheese. So, here it is, all its creamy, cheesy goodness. You can even kind of see some steam coming off the, uh, the picture there. So, is it easier than uh, Kraft mac and cheese? No. <laughs> I would tell you that in all honesty. But sometimes it's nice to have for a change or that uh, little... Um, covered dish that you're going to and you want to impress. Uh, if your friends don't like cheese, uh, why are they your friends? So, anyway, this is Lady Jamer saying like, subscribe, tell your friends, try some homemade mac and cheese. You won't regret it. And we will see you later. Have a wonderful day. And I'm going to put the, uh, the recipe at the end of this video. Uh, so you can see how to make your own. Plus um, how the, the whole meal came out. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.